Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are doing good and staying well in your houses. Um, I'm still in quarantine, so we're back again at my house. Um, this week, we are going to be jumping into the story of um, the Israelites conquering Jericho. And so, um, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 6. So, go ahead and flip there, and um, we'll get started here in a minute. Um, while you're flipping to Joshua, we're, I'm also going to read you a verse out of Deuteronomy, um, and it's in chapter 31, verse 8. And it says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And although this verse um, wasn't meant to specifically apply to our situation right now that we're in, in our world, in our country, um, I think it applies so well and it just gives such hope um, during this time where everything's a little bit uncertain, um, it says, you know, the Lord goes before us. He knows what's going to happen. He's got this in his hands, and it tells us to not fear or be dismayed. And right now, I think there's a lot of fear that's spreading um, along with this virus. And I just want to let you guys know that, you know, God's got this, and there's no reason to fear because he is in control of this situation no matter what happens and so um, instead of fear um, we need to be just praying for the people that are affected by this situation and um, just praying for our nation and our world and I'm just so thankful that our world is coming together um, to battle this situation together and I think that's really awesome so we're going to jump into Joshua chapter 6 today, um, talking about the battle of Jericho. So we're going to uh, read a few verses and then talk about them a little bit, and then we'll read a little bit more. So it says, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. So in these first five verses, um, we see God kind of giving his instructions to Joshua and to the people of Israel. And his instructions are very specific. Um, the city that the Israelites were about to go into is the city of Jericho. In this city, it is, you know, one of the oldest um, fortified cities that um, was in the ancient Near East. And this city was so well supplied. They had plenty of water and food to survive. And they had all of the things that you needed to be a great army and to have just this fortified city with this wall all the way around the city. Um, and nobody could get in um, this wall without permission. And so um, the Israelites going into this, I think that may have scared them a little bit because if you think back to when the Israelites first tried to enter Canaan, they had these 12 spies go out and they saw that in the land of Canaan, there were these big strong giants. And um, I think that scared a lot of people and that put that seed of doubt in their mind. And when that doubt set in, then um, they started um, you know, doubting God and um, not trusting in his plan. And so that's what got them in trouble in the first place. And so these the people that are going into Canaan now are the sons and the daughters of those people who first um, tried to get into Canaan those many years ago. So these, um, these are not the same um, people. These are the sons and the daughters. And then Joshua is leading them who took over for Moses. And so they had these very specific instructions. Um, they, God told them to march around the city 
once a day for six days, and they were not to shout on those days. Um, they were going to be led by the Ark of the Covenant, which we've talked about, that holds the Ten Commandments in it. So the Ark of the Covenant was going to lead them around while they marched. They were going to do once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they were going to march around seven times. And then on the seventh time, they were to shout and the trumpets were to blow their ram's horn. And there were very specific instructions so that when they did this, the wall would fall down. And I think it's really cool how God did this because he did it in a way that only he could have gotten the glory from that. Uh, there's no way that uh, marching around a city and then blowing a horn could have um, brought this city down without God. And the only way that this could have happened is because God allowed it to happen and he caused it to happen. So only God can get the glory from that. And I think that's really awesome, first of all. So the Israelites, they had to place their faith in God. To, they had to trust in this crazy plan um, that, he, that he told them very specific instructions. And they had to trust that, you know, this is going to work. You know, they were probably going to look crazy, and they probably thought it was crazy. And the people that they were fighting against, they really thought they were crazy. But um, they had to trust that God had a plan and that God was going to see them through this battle. And he did. But um, as we're talking about these first five verses, I just want you to think about um, if there's been a time when you've had to trust God even when the situation just seemed impossible. So um, as you're sitting with your families um, or your siblings right now, y'all discuss um, just a time when you had to trust God even when the situation seemed um, nearly impossible. All right, moving on to um, the next few verses. Um, in verses 6 through 21, it talks about the execution of the Lord's instructions. And so we're going to read a little bit about that here in a minute. It says, So Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark while the trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about at once. And they came into camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets, trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, walked on. And they blew the trumpets continually, and the armed men were walking before them. And the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. And the second day they marched around the city once, and returned into the camp. So they did for six days. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is within it be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, 
lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpets, the people shouted a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. Then they devoted all in the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. So in those verses, it just shows us um, the execution of the Lord's instructions. Joshua led the Israelites into the battle that they had you know, very little chances of winning without God's help. And um, that had to be scary for them. Um, but again, these people, I think at this point, they were more willing to trust God. And because they had seen what had happened to their parents, um, I think they knew that this is what they had to do um, in order to get into the land. So they were instructed to march around Jericho for six days. And then on the seventh day, they would march around for seven times. And then on the seventh time, they were to shout and blow the trumpets and the walls would fall down, which they did. It says they fell down flat. So as strange as the instruction seemed, you know, it worked. And um, that was all, all God's doing and none of their own. Um, they followed God's instructions well, and so because they did that, they were rewarded, and um, the city fell down, and they were able to conquer the city of Jericho. So take a minute and ask yourselves, do you think that if they had not followed these instructions exactly, do you think that they would be able to conquer the city like they did? So ask yourself that question real quick. So the last couple of verses, verses 22 through 27, they just show um, the aftermath of the victory. And the Israelites were victorious. And after such a long time and after the journey that they had been on, they finally finally came into the promised land, the land of Canaan. And um, what a sweet victory that must have been um, just getting to be in that promised land that they had been promised so many years ago. If you think about the journey that they've been on, they started in Egypt in slavery um, so many years ago. And the journey that they had been on led them to this point. Um, to where they were victory, victorious in their battle. That journey that they took, it was rough. It was filled with obstacles. And most of the time they were complaining about something or, um, you know, not having food, not having water, um, Moses being a bad leader. There were just so many things that they would come up with to complain about. Um, but they finally got there. You know, they straightened up their act. Um, they finally decided to follow God's plan. But if you think about it, you know, it would have been so much easier had they trusted God the first time around. You know, they made it so much harder on themselves and they, they made the journey so much longer than it had to be um, just because they didn't have the faith that it took to believe in God's plan. And I think during these times that we're having now, I think we can really relate to that. Um, so think about what you've been doing during this quarantine. Have you been trusting God's plan and knowing that he is going to see us through this tough time? Or have you been worrying and complaining and um, doubting God? Think about, think about what you've been doing during this time. Has it been honoring to God? Um, have you used this time well? Think about that for a minute. So 
So because of the impatience of the Israelites and um, their complaining, they were not able to go into the promised land until so many years later. But in this chapter, we finally see them getting to go into that promised land. And um, I can just imagine, you know, the smiles on their faces knowing that they had finally made it into this promised land. Um, and I know that that was such a sweet victory for them. But um, think about, you know, like we said, if they had trusted God so many years ago, then that, they probably would have been there already. So that's our lesson for today. But I just want you to take some time right now and to pray for a few specific things. Um, pray that you would have faith during this time of uncertainty. Um, knowing that God has a plan in all this craziness, just like he had a plan for the Israelites from the moment that they were released from, well, before they were released from slavery, he had a plan for them um, since the beginning of time. Um, and God used them in his plan um, to redeem humanity. And so um, let's just think about um, and pray about trusting in God and trusting in his plan during this time of craziness. I also want you to pray that you would be patient, patient with your parents, patient with your teachers, um, patient with everyone that is trying to um, make it during these times. It's, it's weird for all of us and we're all trying our best. Um, I pray that you are taking it easy on your parents and your teachers because I know that they're trying their best because um, no one's ever been in a situation like this before. And I know you haven't been either, so this is difficult for all of us. But um, I hope that you are patient with them, and I just pray that um, we would limit our complaining and our doubting in God's plan. Um, and that, you know, we wouldn't look to the news, and we won't look to um, material things for, um, for comfort during these times, but that we would look to God's word and look to his promise during these times um, because he's the one with all the answers he knows um, what's going to happen what's going to come out of this situation and i just pray for you and your family right now i pray that um, y'all are all getting along <laughs> um, which is hard to do when you're stuck in a house but i pray that you are and i pray that you're using this time um, for god's glory and just um, coming together as a family i think that's so important and that is one of our goals as the family ministry of Hot Springs Baptist Church is just to see, um, to see you as a family unit, just um, loving on each other and um, parents discipling their children. Um, and that is our hope. And um, we just hope and pray that that is what's happening at your houses right now, that you're taking this sweet time to just be with your families and love on each other and um, doing our best to bring glory to God during this situation. So um, I'm praying for you guys and I hope that y'all have a good week. I don't know when the next time I will see you is, but um, be looking for those videos. Um, the Zoom meetings on Wednesday nights, we're going to continue doing those. We made Play-Doh um, this Wednesday night and we're going to have some fun activities coming up the next the next couple Wednesday nights and uh, these videos on Sundays and make sure you watch the live stream as well um, of Pastor Manley and the other pastors. Um, so yeah, we're praying for you and um, hope that you guys are doing well, staying safe, staying inside and yeah, we love you and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye guys.